Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the solutions to the 9.1 CD problem set where we start writing half equations and then balancing redox equations by adding those half equations together. So for number three, you're simply asked to deduce the half equations of oxidation and reduction for the following reactions. So if I start with A, I've got CA plus 2H plus, and I'm not going to include the state symbols, although as we've talked about in class, they certainly are important in redox equations, Ca2 plus and H2 gas. So if I look at oxidation numbers, solid calcium would be a zero. I guess I don't need a positive there. The hydrogen's obviously a plus one. The calcium ion's a plus two, and the hydrogen gas is a zero. So my one-half equation is Ca becomes Ca2 plus, and then to finish the half equation, I have to add the electrons to the more positive side to balance those charges. So Ca2 plus plus two electrons. And if you care, this is the oxidation part because it's losing those two electrons. The 2H plus is going to become H2 with no charge on it. So now I add the two electrons to the left side or the more positive side, and this is my reduction half equation. Oops, I need to insert an extra sheet. So B, I have 2Fe, 2 plus, plus Cl2 becomes 2Fe, 3 plus, and 2Cl minus. So if I look at the Fe, I have 2Fe, 2 plus, becoming 2Fe, 3 plus. So the oxidation number goes up by 1, which means each, uh, each iron gained an electron, or I need two electrons on this side, which is the oxidation portion of the redox. The Cl2, in its elemental state, has no oxidation number, but becomes a minus 1 electron. So it would have two electrons on this side. I'll go ahead and see if I can squeeze C in here as well. So C has got SN2 plus ion plus 2Fe, 3 plus ion. And this is going to become SN4 plus ion and 2Fe, 2 plus ion. So the SN2 plus becoming SN4 plus means it's lost two electrons, so I add them to this side. By the way, this was the redox up here. This is the oxidation here. And then the 2Fe3 plus, this is just the reverse of what it was up above, becomes 2Fe2 plus. So the two electrons belong on the left this time, and this is now being reduced. And letter D, I've got Cl2 plus two bromine ions becoming two chlorine ions and bromine, Br2. So Cl2 has an oxidation state of zero, becomes minus one. So that means I need two electrons on the left. This is my reduction. Whereas 2Br minus, becoming Br2, needs the two electrons on this side and is showing the oxidation. Number four, now you're going to write the balanced equation. So now I'm going to have to write the half equations and then finish up the rest of the steps. So I'll walk you through the process on all five of these, starting with letter A. So with letter A, I have zinc solid, sulfate ion, SO4, 2 minus, and I end up with zinc ion, the 2 plus charge, and SO2 gas. So if I start with my zinc half reaction, I may have zinc becoming Zn2 plus. So the first thing I want to make sure is I've got an equal number of zinc on each side, which I do. 
So I can go ahead and balance the electrons by adding them to the more positive side, and I'm done with this half equation. The second half equation is a little messier, but not too bad. I have SO4, 2 minus, and it's going to become SO2. Now my sulfurs are balanced, but I need more oxygen on the right side, and I do that by adding water because it's in an acidic solution. So that means I have H plus ions and water available to help facilitate this reaction. This means my oxygens are now balanced, but I've picked up four hydrogen, so I need to add four hydrogen ions to the left side to balance that. At this point, then, I need to look at my charge and figure out which side needs the electrons in order to balance the charge. The product side has zero charge overall, but the reactant side has an overall plus two charge and needs two electrons to balance it. Now when I compare the two reactions, before I can add these two half equations, I have to make sure the electrons being gained and lost equal, and they do. So now I can go ahead and add the half equations, and my final equation would show zinc solid plus 4H plus, and those will be aqueous or aqueous, plus SO4 2 minus is going to yield zinc ion plus SO2 gas plus H2O liquid. And that's my balanced redox equation for letter A. Equation B, we're given I minus plus HSO4 minus yields I2 and SO2. So if I start with the iodine, since it's the first one I see, I've got I minus becoming I2. Now first thing I have to do is make sure my iodine are balanced on each side, so I'd need two iodine ions. And now I want to balance my charge, since I don't have any hydrogen or oxygen to worry about. So I'd have two electrons on the product side. The HSO4 minus yields SO2, so my sulfur is being reduced here. And you could figure out the charges on the sulfur if you want, but I really don't need it because I'm going to have to go ahead and add 2H2O here to balance my oxygen. I'm going to have to add, I need a total of 4H plus over here, so 3H plus will be enough. And then when I look at it, I need to figure out my charges. I've got three positive, one negative, so it means I need two electrons on that side. And before I add these up, I see that the two electrons being transferred equal out, so these cancel in the final equation, and I'm left with I have two I minus plus HSO4 minus plus the three hydrogen ions, and it's yielding I2 plus SO2 plus 2H2O. And again, I should have my state symbols in here. IB will certainly expect that from you. So aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. I believe this is aqueous. It could be a solid. I don't remember from the original. This was gas and water is a liquid. Moving on to letter C, I have NO3 minus zinc solid, and it's becoming NH4 plus, and zinc ion. So NO3 minus becoming NH4 plus 
means I need three water on this side for starters. Three water on this side brings my hydrogen up to a total of 10, so I need 10 H plus on the reactant side. And now when I look at my charges, I've got a plus one on the product side, but I have a total of plus nine on the reactant side, so that means I need eight electrons to balance my charge on the two sides. The zinc is much easier. I have Zn becoming Zn2 plus. Zinc is already balanced, so I just go ahead and add two electrons to the side. But now before I can add the two equations, I'm going to have to get eight electrons uh, being lost by zinc in order for eight electrons to be gained by the nitrogen. So what I need to do is multiply this whole equation by four, which then makes this four zinc, four zinc ions, and eight electrons. So now when I add it up, I'm going to have 10 hydrogen ions plus NO3 nitrate ion plus four zinc atoms in their solid state, forming four zinc ions plus NH4 and finally 3H2O. Four D has I two plus OCl minus yielding IO three minus and Cl minus. So if I start with the I two yielding IO three minus, I'm going to need to balance my iodines first. So I put a two here, and that means I now have six oxygen that I balance by adding six water to the reactant side. I now need 12 hydrogen ion on the product side. And when I go to balance my charge, I've got a minus two and a plus 12. So I need a total of 10 electrons to balance this charge. Looking at the OCL minus, the OCL minus becomes Cl minus. The chlorines are balanced but I need a water to balance out oxygen, which means I need two hydrogen to balance. And now when I look at my charges, the minus ones on each side basically balance out. So I need two electrons to balance that H plus. And now before I can add this up, again, I'm gonna need to uh, multiply my lower equation by five so that I have 10 electrons being transferred. So I have 10 H plus, I have five OCL minus, five Cl minus, and five H2O. This means not only do my 10 electrons cancel out, but I've got 10 and 12 H plus, so it's gonna be a net two H plus, and I have five and six H2O, or a net one H2O, and when I add this all up, I'm going to end up with just one H2O liquid, my I2 aqueous, my five OCL minus, also aqueous. On the other side, I'm going to have my two iodate, IO3 minus. I'm going to have to hydrogen ion, and I'm going to have five chlorine ion. In part E, I've got permanganate and sulfurous acid combining, and I'm ending up with sulfate ion and manganese ion. So if I start with the MnO4, M there, MnO4 minus becoming Mn2 plus. My manganese balance, but I need four waters to balance my oxygen. And that means I'm going to need eight hydrogen 
ion on the left side. And when I go to balance my charge, I have a charge of plus 7 on the left and plus 2 on the right, so I add 5 electrons to the left to balance out the charge. With the H2SO3, yielding SO4 2 minus, Again, my sulfur is balanced, but I need an H2O over here to balance the oxygen. And I now have a total of 4 H plus needed on the right side to balance that as well. Looking at my charge, I have a total charge on the right side of a plus 2, so I will add 2 electrons. And this is a classic manganese reaction where I have one using five electrons, the other using two. So my least common multiple is going to be 10. So I'm going to multiply the first reaction by two. So this is going to become 10 electrons. It's going to become 2MnO4, 16H+, 2MN2+, and 8H2O. The second equation, I'm going to multiply by 5 for a total of 5H2O, 5H2SO3, 5 sulfate, 20H+, plus, and 10 electrons. And again, I'm going to be able to cancel. The electrons always need to cancel. That's how I know my redox is set up correctly. But I've got 16H plus and 20H plus, so I'm going to have a net of 4H plus on the product side. And I have 8H2O and 5H2O, so I'm going to have a net of 3H2O on the product side. And yes, it's possible to have both the H plus and the H2O on the same side. So now when I carry it down, I've got 2MnO4 minus. plus 5H2SO3, and that's going to yield 2MN2+, plus, plus 3 water, plus 5 sulfate, plus 4 hydrogen ion, and that is my balanced equation. In number eight, you're asked to identify the oxidizing and reducing agents in the following reactions. So if I take a look at H2 plus Cl2 and 2HCl, I can see that the hydrogen and chlorine each have zero. Hydrogen becomes a plus one, chlorine becomes a minus one. So because hydrogen gains electrons, I'm sorry, loses electrons, Hydrogen is oxidized, making it a reducing agent. Reducing agent just means it causes something else to be reduced, in this case chlorine. Chlorine is reduced, therefore it oxidizes something else and is called an oxidizing agent. In part B, Aluminum starts with no charge because it's in its elemental state, and then it picks up a positive charge as it becomes um, an ion. So aluminum is being oxidized and is the reducing agent. And then PB starts out as a positive ion and becomes a metal with zero charge. So PB is being reduced and is considered the oxidizing agent. Letter C, I have Cl2 with no charge, and then it becomes a negative ion. So Cl2 is um, going to be reduced and called the oxidizing agent. Well, Ki the I is going to go from being a negative to being no charge. So this is I minus is going to be oxidized and being known as the reducing agent. And I need to go back up to A, B, and C. Um, 
To be correct here, I actually have to say H2 and Cl2 are my oxidizing and reducing agents. I have to be specific about the species on the reactant side. It's never the species on the product side. It's the reactant that either gets reduced or oxidized. So my second one, Al, would be fine, but the Pb should be Pb2+. Plus. I should be clear that it's um, lead ion that's being reduced. Just like in C, it's iodine ion being reduced. So going on to D, I've got CH4 and 2O2. Well, I know the O2 is going to go from 0 to a minus 2, so oxygen is going to gain electrons or be reduced, which makes it the oxidizing agent. And again, it's O2 is actually what's being reduced. And then the CH4, the hydrogen's not going to change its um, oxidation state, but carbon's going to go from a minus 4 to being a plus 4. So carbon is being oxidized, and I can either put carbon minus 4, or I could put the CH4, put the whole species. But either way, that's my reducing agent. Number nine, use the two reactivity series given to predict whether the reactions will occur and write the equations where relevant. So anytime you're looking at an equation and trying to determine if it occurs, you're looking for the element that's trying to bump off a like ion in a compound. So in the first case, silver is trying to bump off copper and silver is not more reactive than copper, so that first equation will not happen. In the second equation, aluminum is trying to bump off iron, and that equation will happen because aluminum, aluminum is more reactive. And aluminum will form AlNO33, and iron solid will form behind. And so when I balance this, I'm going to need a 3 here and a 2 here and a 2 here and a 3 here to balance that. Letter C, Br2 is my element and bromine is trying to bump off iodine. And again, that will happen because bromine is the more reactive halogen of the two. So NaI plus Br2, I can expect a single replacement reaction forming NaBr plus I2 and then balance with a 2 here and a 2 here. But in letter D, I2, iodine is not more reactive than chlorine, so D will not occur. And then finally, number 10, this is like a favorite test question to give you these reactions set up activity series with just these fake elements, W, X, Y, Z. So you're supposed to figure it out and put the most reactive first. So when I look at that first equation, W plus X plus yields W plus plus X. So this is my element, and the reaction happens. So that tells me W is more reactive than element X. In the second reaction, Z tries to replace Y plus, but does not. So that lets me know Y is more reactive than Z, or Z is less than reactive than Y. And then X trying to bump off Z is successful, so X is more reactive than Z. So both X and Y are more reactive. And by reasoning, then I can assume W is also more reactive, so Z seems to be the big dud. And then X and Y plus, X is able to bump off Y, so X is more reactive than Y. So I know that X is more reactive than both Y and Z, and I know Y is more reactive than Z, and I know W is more reactive than X. So there's my activity series, W, X, Y, Z. In part B, will these equations occur? And in each case, I've got a metal trying to take electrons from W, but I know W is the most reactive. So in both cases, there will be no reaction occurring.